Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma bada habita fillah I wanted to quickly <coughs> and we know when I say quickly that what that means so Allah understand uh, go over uh, the hadith of Umar radiyallahu tala'an and from this fantastic book that I purchased about a week or so ago and I advise Tulab al ilm uh, wherever you can, to get this. It's called Fawaid al-Tarbawiyya min Arba'in al Nawawiyya. It is beneficial, uh, benefits from Arba'in al Nawawi with regards to education, the educational effect. Absolutely amazing book by Musnid uh, Qahtani. And actually, he is the... He is here in the city I'm, I'm in, so it would be nice to actually go try to visit him. And he is the mudir of the Merkis ad dawa here. He is the head of the Merkis ad dawa Listen to this and listen to these fantastic fawaid he's mentioning. An Abi uh, Abdurrahman, <clears throat> Abdullah bin Umar bin al Khattab radiyallahu ta'ala anhu ma qal, sunatu Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yakul, buni al Islam ala khams. Shahadati and la ilaha illallah, wa anna Muhammad Rasulullah, wa ikam is salat, wa ita is zakat, wa hajjil bait, wa som Ramadan, ruahu Bukhari. In his hadith in Sahih al Bukhari, the hadith uh, Buni Islam al Khams, that Islam is built upon five pillars uh, the shahada, uh, shahadata in la ilaha illallah, wa anna Muhammad Rasulullah, uh, establishing the prayer, giving the alms, paying the alms tax, zakat making the pilgrimage, and fasting the holy month of Ramadan. Ruahu Bukhari wa Muslim. In this hadith, uh, the fantastic benefits that were mentioned, and I'm also going to tie it into the khutbah I just attended, which was absolutely fantastic. Walillah uh, al One of the benefits <coughs> that were mentioned, he said, A'zam shan hadhi al-a'mal alati buni alayhi Alayha al-Islam wa sammaha al-ulama bi arkan al-Islam al-Khamsa wa sammayta ba'd ba'd abwaab al-Janna bi asma'iha mithla ba'b al-Salat, ba'b al-Sadaqa, ba'b al-Sawm wa Riyan So he mentioned the first benefit, he said that the the deeds that are mentioned in this hadith it shows their fantastic and excellent level of deeds and how great they are. And the ulama, and for this reason, the ulama uh, mentioned them as the arkan al-Islam, the pillars of Islam. And of course, first and foremost, it's in the al fath or the left of the hadith, the Prophet Sallallahu said, Buni al-Islam, uh, uh, the Prophet Sallallahu said, Islam, Buni al-Islam al khams that Islam is built upon five. So the ulama, they mention, that uh, these are the arkan, these are the pillars of uh, Islam. And he said also, with regards to that, he said, and it, what shows and illustrates their greatness is that the uh, doors of paradise are also mentioned with their names. For example, Baba Salat, the, the door of, of prayer, the door of sadaqa is also mentioned, the door of fasting is also a, a, a door or gateway in paradise. Also, the Bab Riyan, or Riyan, which is also mentioned in a hadith, the, uh, which refers to the fasting and the, and the, the, the smell. Uh, another benefit of this hadith is the A'dham Shan Atawheed wa Ikhlas al Ibadati lillahi ta'ala huwa A'dham. أعظم أركان الإسلام وأعظم أمر الله به وهو دعوة جميع الأنبياء والمرسلين. He said this also shows, and I'm sorry for reading, going too much into Arabic, but it, it helps the flow because this is really fantastic. Um, so he mentions that the the greatness of Tawheed and sincerity to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala in worship, and that it is one of the greatest pillars of Islam, or it is the greatest. And it is the greatest pillar of Islam. And it is the greatest thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded with. And it is what all the NBA uh, call to. 
And then he mentions the ayat, Qala ta'ala, wa ma arsalna min qablika min rasulin illa nuhiya ilayhi annuhu la ilaha illallah, uh, la, annuhu la ilaha uh, illa ana fa'budun. Uh, in Surah Al-Anbiya, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab Al-Kareem, and we did not send before you a messenger except that they were re that was revealed to him uh, that there is no God worthy of worship except me, meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, and worship me alone. So that shows us the greatness of ibadah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says in Kitab Al-Kareem, uh, and we sent to every nation a messenger to worship Allah alone and avoid the Tagud and avoid those things worship besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Another benefit of this hadith is it shows the mahabbatillahi ta'ala li salat wa a'dham shaniha. It shows that Allah loves the prayer and that it has such a great and the, and it's it's great affair. That uh, that salat is just and that it is one of the greatest arkan al-Islam amaliya, that it is one of the greatest or is the greatest uh, pillar of Islam, which is a deed, uh, amaliya. There's almiya or amaliya. Almiya refers to uh, refers to issues of uh, uh, aqidah and creed. Amaliya refers to issues of like mu'amalat and practice or, or physical actions. So, uh, the, that salat is one of the greatest, or is the greatest, uh, amaliyah, uh, deed, which is, you know, that's put into practice, it's a physical deed. And then he said, and then he said, and this is in relation, in, in related to the fact that it's even greater than som, was a kat, wal hajj, wa jihad, ghayda dhalik min al amal, that it, it's even greater than those other aspects of great, that are, you know, that are the pillars of Islam. And then, of course, jihad fi sabilillah, uh, which are deeds amaliyah. They're amaliyah. They're, you know, mu'amalat. Then they're amal, physical amal. Uh, but that salat is even greater than them and more important. And then he mentions many, many uh, benefits. And then he also said, uh, also which, which shows this in the greatness of salat. He said, the مثل كونها أو ما يحاسب عليه العبد. يوم القيامة فإن صلحت صلح سائر عمله وإن فسدت فسدت سائر عمله. As is mentioned in the hadith, so he said, and also what illustrates that the importance of salat is the fact that it is mentioned in a hadith as the first deed that a servant will be held accountable for on the day of judgment, and that if the prayer is um, uh, uh, correct and it is uh, good, they're making proper prayer, then the rest of their deeds uh, will be, uh, in accordance with that, will be considered, will be sound. And if their prayer is wrecked, you know, and nux and f fessed, or, you know, that is, a, you know, it's incomplete or, or improper, period, then the rest of their deeds will be built upon that, will be also improper. And this is in accordance to the Hadith of Ruwah Al-Tirmidhi uh, in Sahih al uh, And then he mentions the Hadith, and the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam aqala fiha bayna rajul wa kufr wa shirk tarka salat, Ruwah Muslim. Um, he mentions the Hadith in Sahih Muslim that where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that between a man and uh, disbelief uh, and shirk, is leaving the prayer. And then he mentioned another bit of it. He said, and the, this hadith also illustrates the greatness of, uh, of charity. And spending in the, in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, and that zakat is a pillar of Islam. And that, uh, uh, I'm sorry, that uh, sadaqah is a pillar of Islam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves it, and you gain the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by doing it. And he said that it also is something that prevents you from the fire. And this is in accordance with the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa That uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, and fear the fire, even if it is with a uh, date stone. And this is in Bukhari and Muslim. Another benefit of this hadith is this hadith shows the... Uh, the importance of tarbiyat and nafs of, uh, of educating and reforming uh, one's soul and adhering to the wajibat and the fara'id 
and doing them in their proper time in according with their proper sifa and their proper um, in the proper manners of performing those acts of ibadah according to the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu as Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala legislated it like salat and zakat and fasting and hajj that they all have a time and that you must do those acts of ibadah within their time and perform them in accordance with the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu wa so that affirms for us those two conditions for our deeds to be accept, uh, 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 um, deeds to be accepted ikhlas with the bat al sunnah, you know, ikhlas wa mutaba, uh, sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and in accordance with the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. And then he mentioned some other dalil, and it would just take too much time to go through that. Another benefit of this hadith is it shows us the also the importance of, of uh, giving and giving. Uh, paying attention and taking care of the fuqara, the people who are deserving and those who are in need. And that this is a deed of the Muslim. And then he mentions also an ayat, وَالَّذِينَ فِي أَمْوَالِهِمْ حَقُّ مَعْلُومْ لِسَائِلِي وَالْمَحْرُومْ Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in Surah Al-Ma'arij that those about the, the ah, Ahla Iman, Ahla uh, Tawheed, that they are those who in their wealth is a right for the you know the people who who are in need and the people who have rights over them. Another benefit of this hadith is this hadith also shows us a hamiyat to fiqh fi din, to fiqh fi din, the importance of gaining knowledge of the religion and having understanding of the religion because the better the way you're going to be able to practice those arkan properly is through ilm, is through Islamic knowledge. It's not just something inherently you inherently know how to do salat, you inherently know how to make tahara, you inherit la these things are learned. You we learn these things and so that's fiqh fi deen. And the Prophet said, Man yura the law be khairan yafiqu fi deen. Whenever Allah wants good for a person, he gives them understanding of the religion. Another benefit of this hadith, Adam Shan Sawm in the Allahi Ta'ala, the greatness of fasting um, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that fasting is, is so great and that it's a pillar of Islam and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves it and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves the Sa'imin and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a, the door of Rayyan in Jannah for the those people who fast uh, and the only people who enter it is the, the those people who fast. And that the uh, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned in the Hadith Al-Qudsi that Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala says, Kullu amal min Adam, uh, Kullu amal bani Adam uh, lahu illa som. Uh, that, um, uh, that Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala, he reported that Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala says that all the deeds of, 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 of the children of Adam are for him except fasting. So it shows us how great fasting is. Another benefit of this hadith, to know ibadat wa abwab al-khayr, falo kana islam luhu ruqan wahid faqat, o anna al-jannata laha bab wahid faqat, la shukka thalika ala al-nas, fa yanbaghi lil-mu'min, and la yahram nafsuhu min al-munafisa fi al-khayr. Kulu hisab, this is beneficial, and that's why I had to read it in Arabic. And it, it gives me a, 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 a better tesor of it. Uh, he said that, uh, that the servant, that uh, this hadith also illustrates that there are many different ways of doing good deeds. And that it is upon the Muslim, and and that if it, and it, and if good deeds were only by one way and one mean, uh, one means only, then that would be difficult upon the servants. So that shows the mercy of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. If it was only one deed that you could do, and that it was just to get to paradise, and then you you didn't do any other deeds, that would be difficult. In fact, to be able to do that perfectly and do that path. For everyone to be able to do that, but rather there are so many different ways of doing khair. and this is what the sheikh, or what the author is mentioning, and he said, uh, so it is. It's imperative upon a believer that they do not prevent themselves from doing good deeds and striving for the ver the khair in accordance with their ability, and and all the abwab al khair and all the different ways of khair. And this r reminds me of the khutbah. So the khutbah today. So this is relevant, I'm going to tie it in quickly, that was uh, very beneficial and that he was talking about the, uh, the Salaf and how they 
were doing the the sarair, the deeds, uh, righteous deeds, in private. And and one important factor, the thing that he mentioned, is that if a person does wicked deeds in private, the si the sin uh, is great, and it is something which destroys the heart. Because when you're doing sins, even if people don't uh, see your sins, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala see, sees everything. In the law, nothing is con uh, uh, concealed from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the heavens or the earth. And what it does, and we know this from Tejri, uh, all of us, that when we do sins, even if people don't see it, it makes you feel crunchy. And the more and more you do those sins, it, it, it just, you, you feel, sometimes you just feel depressed because you've been doing such and such sin. You're listening to music, you're watching this, you're doing that, you're smoking this. In private, you just feel like, you feel like a hypocrite. Sometimes you feel that it's written on your head, hypocrite. And you feel that. So he, the sheikh was mentioning during the khutbah that this shows that when you, you know, this, this destroys the heart. And when you do righteous deeds, which is a part of those Abu Abu Khair we were just talking about, that you do righteous deeds that are hidden from the people, that no one knows that you give that sadaqa occasionally, or that you pray in the depths of the night, or do you adhere to all your sunnah and prayers, or you fast Mondays and Thursdays, or whatever the good deeds that you do that are hidden from the people, that it shows that those things are great too. So if the sin is great, the reward for the uh, doing the righteous deeds is is great and greater. Another benefit of this hadith, he mentioned that this hadith uh, shows the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for those various types of ibadat that are mentioned in this hadith, meaning the arkan of Islam. Another benefit of this hadith, and we'll end with this, is the also it shows that the uh, the greatness of hajj and that uh, hajj and umrah are a great forgiveness and a great act of ibadah. And this is illustrated, the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said, Al-umratu al-umrati, al-umratu al-umrati, kafaratun lima baynahuma, wal hajju mabrur, laysa luhu jiza ila jannah. The Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said in hadith in Sahih Muslim al Bukhari uh, that uh, umrah to umrah, kafaratun lima baynahuma, that uh, umrah to umrah is uh, an expiation to what took place between those two umrahs. Uh, and Hajj al Mabrur, the accepted Hajj, there is no reward for it except paradise. That if it's an accepted Hajj and you die, you're, you're in good, you're in good uh, shape and good care. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala Nabi Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless the author of this fantastic, excellent book. Wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala Nabi Muhammad.